Hello everybody, hello again and welcome to uh, another video. This is going to be effectively the second video on the CRP5 but will uh, will actually be part one. The absolute basics of how to use the CRP5. So before we get into the details of how to use the CRP5 for uh, its main use as an aviation tool, uh, I'm going to quickly introduce just for a few minutes the ins and outs of, uh, of how the CRP5 can be used as a, a basic calculator for multiplication and division. A lot of people aren't aware that you can use a CRP5 for this purpose, so I'll quickly show you how it's done. So, first things first, let's pick a nice simple uh, sum. Let's pick a, a multiplication 3 times 7. We know 3 times 7 is 21, but how do we go about calculating this on the CRP5? Well, what we do, we simply line up the first number the 3, if we're doing 3 times 7, we line up the 3 with the 10 at the top of the CRP5. So I'm going to do that now. I'll line up the 3, which is obviously 30 in this case, but it can either mean 0 0.3, 3, 30, 300, 3000, as you'll see a bit later. And we line up the 3 against the 10, and then all we do is we look on the outer scale for the second number, so in this case it was 3 times 7, so we look for the 7 on the outer scale, and you can see there that it lines up with 21. Nice and easy. So let's pick a second fairly simple calculation, a very simple one, 4 times 4. Well, we know 4 times 4 is 16, so we're going to take the 4, uh, which is just here, and we're going to line that up with a 10, and there we go. And we look on the outer scale for the 4 again, and it's all the way down here, and I've just turned this upside down. You can see that under the 4, we've got 16. 4 times 4 is 16, nice and simple. Um, let's pick another one. Let's pick a slightly harder one, but not much. Uh, 12 times 11. That's 12 times 11 should be 132. So let's just confirm that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the 12. Uh, we're going to go past 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. We're going to line the 12 up with the 10. And now we're going to look on the outer scale for the the, the second number which is the 11 in this case and you can see there under the 11 we have 131 and 132 so 12 times 11 is 132 nice and simple let's pick a slightly trickier one but not really that hard 150 times 4 so a slightly bigger number 150 times 4 uh, is obviously 150 times 2 is 300 so 150 times 4 is 600 now, it's not a difficult calculation to do, but the reason I've selected this problem is just to show you that for small numbers, for any number um, in double digits up to uh, about 99 or 100, the CRP5 should, in theory, give you the exact answer. For any number as a decimal or any number greater than 100, you have to understand the order of magnitude that your answer should be in. Uh, the only reason I say that is because in this example, you'll see this more in the next example, but in this example, if we pick 150 times 4, I'm going to pick 150, which in this case is obviously going to be uh, represented by the number 15, and we're going to look on the outside scale for 20, 30 and 40, so I'm going to turn this upside down again, you can see again under <coughs> 4, the CRP5 actually tells us the answer is 60, so you as a user have to be able to interpret that 60 as a 600 by knowing basic maths. Uh, I'll give you another example to prove my point a bit better. Let's say we gave uh, a much bigger number, something like 1612 times 58. Now, I off the top of my head have absolutely no idea what 1612 times 58 is. So what the best thing you can do is to, to work this out without using a calculator is to try and round both the numbers up or down to make your life as easy as possible. So if we say the number 1612 is 1600 and let's call the number 58 60 uh, we've now got 1600 times 60. Now I'm no mathematician and I still don't really know off the top of my head what 1600 times 60 is. But if I take the 60 and divide that by 10, it's a much easier calculation to do in my head, 1600 times 6. 
because I know that 1600 times 2 is 3200 and I simply have to then multiply that by 3 which gives me uh, 3200 times 3 is 9600 okay and then all I have to do because I took the 60 and I then had to divide that by 10 to make the mental calculation easier just don't forget at the end to multiply the answer by 10 now the only reason I did that calculation in my head was simply because I need to understand approximately what order of magnitude of answer I'm expecting with my answer and the reason is as follows um, I just did the calculation 1600 times 6 was about uh, 9600 which I said I then have to multiply the answer by 10 to have an approximate answer so 9,600 times 10 is approximately 96,000. Well, it's exactly 96,000, actually. But I don't care what the actual answer is, because all I need is a rough ballpark. I know that my answer is going to be around about in the 90,000s, and I'll show you why. If I just zoom in a bit, let's try and do this calculation. So let's put our 1,612 against the 10 which is uh, something like that thereabouts it's not going to be exactly as accurate as a as a calculator but it's it's good enough uh, we said we were going to multiply that by 58 so we need to find 5 8 on the outer scale uh, if we look here we zoom in where's 5 8 58 58 is 55 56 57 and 58 now you can see that the the answer I actually get is uh, about 93 and a half 94 now, as someone that's not a human calculator, I don't know if the answer to that is, is it 94? Is it 9.4? Is it 0 0.94? Is it 940? Is it 9,400? Is it 94,000? I don't know. Which is why you have to approximate the answer before you calculate it. Now, we already approximated it's going to be something around about 90-something thousand. So when I read off here, about 91, 92, 93, 93 and a half, just under 94,000. That's close enough for me. Uh, the actual answer, uh, I think, is 93,496. So about 93 and a half thousand. And it's within the accuracy of the CRP5. That's pretty good for such a big calculation. Uh, let's do another one. Let's do something like, let me just reset this. There we go, put that back upside down. Okay, let's do one more and then we'll do some divisions. So let's do something like 15.7 multiplied by 123. Now we've got a decimal in this one which makes it a little bit trickier. Um, I have no idea what 15.7 times 123 is, um, but what I can do is approximate 15.7 to 15 that's a fairly easy number to multiply and I can call 123 approximately 120 I can then say well what's 150 uh, sorry what's uh, 120 times 15 uh, I still don't know but I do know that 120 times 10 is 1200 and therefore 120 times 5 has got to be half that which is 600 if you then add them together you've got 15 sorry you've got 120 times 10 and 120 times 5 which is 1200 add uh, 600 which is approximately 1800 so I know the answer is going to be around about uh, 1800 or so and again let's just double check that so we're going to take our 15.7 at the top of the CRP5 here and we're going to line it up as close as we can so there's 15.234567 it's 15.7 right in there and we're going to look for 123 on the outer scale which is going to be 121 2, 3 and you can see there that we get an answer which in this case actually tells us that it's uh, what's that it says it's about 19.3 so again you as a user have to be able to interpret that is it really 19.3 is it 193 is it 193 million? Is it 1.9 billion? You, you've got to be able to, to figure this out yourself. Uh, uh, what's the actual answer? So uh, I'm getting approximately 1,925, 1,930, something like that. Okay? I don't know what the actual answer is, but that's not important. It's a good enough ballpark figure. And remember, the CRP5 is only ever going to give you, uh, at least with big numbers, um, 
an approximation but you can see here that that number is fairly good and let's just for closure let's just figure out what that number actually is shall we let's just have a quick look uh, 15.7 times 123 1931 so again you can see this is actually very very accurate okay so now you've seen how to do multiplications let's see how to do divisions now divisions are incredibly simple to do on the CRP5 a division as you'll know is made up of a, a top number and a bottom number the top number is called the numerator and the bottom number is called the denominator and on the CRP5 you'll notice that we have two scales we have an outer scale and an inner scale and all we have to do to work out the the answer to a division question is use the outer scale as the numerator and we use the inner scale as the denominator so let's pick some nice easy examples to go through um, well I know that 8 times 6 is 48 so therefore I know that 48 divided by 8 is going to be 6 so let's figure out how to do that what we do 48 divided by 8 you simply want to find the 48 on the outer scale which is the numerator okay so there's 40 I'll just line this up so you can see it's 45 it's 46 47 and 48 that's 48 on the outer scale and I'm going to line it up that with 8 which is just here on the inner scale which is going to be the denominator and you can see there that if I do 48 divided by 8 all I have to do now is find the number 10 on the inner scale this blue 10 and it will literally give me an arrow pointing to the answer now again you have to interpret the answer the answer is obviously not 60 the answer is obviously 6 so some basic understanding of mathematics is required but these simple sums are not too tricky so let's do another one let's pick uh, 96 divided by 4 what's 96 divided by 4 well again let's find 96 which is going to be up here somewhere it's 1995 so let's pick our 96 which is going to be 95 96 there we go and then we simply move the inner scale until the 4 is directly underneath the 96 there's 96 divided by 4 and we simply look for the 10 on the inner scale the big arrow there's the big arrow and the 10 and you can see if I turn this upside down you'll see the arrow and the 10 points to 24 and again using your common sense you can see that 96 divided by 4 is 24 it's not 2.4 it's not 240 so it's a nice easy straightforward answer and let's do one more nice simple one 28 divided by 7 uh, now let's well yeah let's do 28 divided by 7 we know that's going to be 4 uh, so let's do there's 28 there on the outer scale and uh, let's put the number 4 underneath it there's 28 divided by 4 and again we look for the 10 on the inner scale look for the big red arrow and the 10 points to 7 so 28 divided by 4 is 7 nice and easy now this obviously works with uh, again if you're doing multiplications of, of big numbers or divisions of, of big numbers in the hundreds or thousands or dividing by decimals use exactly the same trick as you would for the multiplication just try and figure out uh, try and round up one of the the numerator or the divider uh, to a nice easy round number get an approximation you don't need an accurate answer you simply need an approximate ballpark figure to figure out to what order of magnitude you're dealing with are you dealing with tens hundreds thousands tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands you don't need to be any more accurate than that you simply read off the number from the CRP5 and you can figure out by knowing what order of magnitude you're dealing with what the answer will be is all you have to do so the last thing I want to talk about very briefly to do with the CRP5 a simple trick you can do is working out uh, ratios and fractions nice and easy to do uh, if we set this back up to be the right way up so I've got my 10 at the top if I set this up let's say with 10 at the top I'm gonna put I'm gonna set up the fraction of one half so I've got 10 and I've got the 10 directly over the 5 or this could be a hundred over 50 it could be a thousand over 500 either way I've set up a I've set up a fraction okay and if I look around the CRP5 I'll see that fraction has been copied um, for everything so if I look at 10 over 5 is a half but look at that I've also got 12 over 6 or 120 over 60 140 over 70 
I've got 60 over 30, I've got 70 over 35, I've got 24 over 12, I've got 20 over 10. So I've set up the, the fraction of one half. And I don't have to move the CRP5 now. Once I've set that up, I can I can see exactly uh, 10 divided by 5. And again, if I want, I can follow the red arrow, and it'll tell me the answer's 2. But because I've set it up in this way, I can also say, what's 60 divided by 30? Well, look at the big red arrow. It's also 2. What about 1,600 divided by 800? It's also 2. Uh, let's do thirds. So if I set up 90 over 30, okay, 3 times 30 is 9, uh, 90, sorry, so 90 divided by 3 is going to be 30, so that's um, fractions of a third. So if I set up uh, 90 there, I'm going to set up the 3 underneath the 90, and you can see that 90 over 3, and if I look for my big red arrow down there, I'll just spin it upside down, Again, it tells me the answer is 3. But also, as I've set that up, remember there's a 90 over 30 there, or 90 over 3, or 900 over 300. Notice that I've got 12 over 4, which is also a third. Uh, I've got 18 over 6. I've got 24 over 8 down here. And I've got 45 over 15 down here. The whole thing is already set up for me in that specific uh, fraction, which is very, very useful for you. And let's do one more just to finish off a nice easy one of 200 divided by 5. So our 200 is over here somewhere. I'll just flip this upside down to bring it nearer the top. So there's our, our 20 or our 200, if you will. And I'm just going to line that up with, with 5, which is over here. So there's 20 over 5 or 200 over 50 or 2000 over 500. And you can see that our arrow points to 4. So we know that 200 divided by 50 is 4, or 20 divided by 5 is 4. But again, notice I've got 40 over 10, which is also a quarter. Uh, I've got 28 over 7. I've got 16 over 4. I've got 18 over 4.5. Um, what else have we got? Let's move down here. Uh, I'll turn that upside down so I can see it. What else have we got? we got 80 over 20 and 120 over 30. Uh, so that's the basics. That's how you use the CRP5 to do basic multiplication, division, and fractions. Any questions, stick them in the comments, and I'll have another video up doing something slightly more complicated soon. Thanks very much.